I love robot hands. These hands were from Robot X, the bipedal humanoid life-size walking robot, but the hands were mostly for when I dressed up as Spider-Man and they were just there for cosmetic reasons. So in this episode, I'm actually gonna build a force-controlled hand, or gripper, which can detect how much force it's applying. I've got several reasons to do this. In this example, we're gonna try and pick up eggs and sausages, and if you've been watching my previous videos, you'll know why that is. But in the future, it could be used on anything else. So I wanna build a universal robot arm, and there'll be more to this series to actually build an entire robot arm that can be used for multi-purpose things. I've got lots of other robotics in my channel, including Open Dog the Quadrupedal Robot, which I'm currently working on at the moment, and various other bits and pieces. So don't forget, you can also support my channel through Patreon, and if you don't like Patreon, you can support me through YouTube channel membership. So just click on that join button below. And don't forget, you can get Open Dog t-shirts and various other merchandise in my store. And the links are in the description to this video. So my plan for this project is to make a fairly standard looking three finger robot gripper. And I considered other finger configurations, more like a human hand. But for now, this will do fine for picking up eggs and most other items. So I've pretty much just taken the finger digits from Spider-Man's hands and scaled those up 50% to make them a bit chunkier. We might put some rubber things on the end to help grip but that should do perfectly well and of course we've got these uh, joints at each place here so we can position each finger there'll be a bungee in the back of the finger that pulls it back that's tied off to the wrist and on the inside of course we'll have a cord that runs up the inside of the finger through that nice curved piece there and off out the top to a servo <laughs> So here's my assembled gripper. So we've got all of our joints there. We need to put some bungee cord on the back so they spring back and then put some cord on the inside to pull them in. I might put some Ninja Flex fingertips on to uh, help grip eggs and things like that. I've got these 20 kilogram Metal Gear servos and those are gonna be mounted above with pulleys to pull the strings. So that should work pretty well. They're pretty tough servos. Now we do need to leave some space though so that we can get something flexible in there or at least something stretchy like a spring or some bungee cord. So the servos are gonna be mounted pretty high up. So there's my gripper now, I'll put some bungee on the top there that pulls those straight again, so that seems to work pretty well. It doesn't have to apply very much force, just enough to open up those fingers again, and of course they'll be pulled the other way with the servos. And that servo tower sits on top, and I haven't glued it on just yet, and that's because I need to make sure that the edge of the pulley aligns with the middle of the finger, so this might have to rotate round slightly so that we can get the pulley the right distance to align with the center of that finger, although it's not too important. So the next thing is to work out how much string I need to pull and work out what pulley size I need on each servo. And actually, it's not very much string you need to pull there at all. It's not even probably 30 millimeters, and I don't need to fold the finger right in like, like that, so we just need them to meet in the middle, of course. So uh, that's not too bad at all. So there are my pulleys, but before I go and string this up, we need to wire in some electronics to set the home positions for those servos. So here's my electronics set up. We've got a battery, one of these five volt, 10 amp power supplies, which is gonna power the servos. Not sure if they're linear. It's got a big heat sink or whether it's a chop. If anyone knows, let me know. It's in potting compound, so I can't tear it apart. Uh, but there we go, 10 amps at five volts to power the servos. And we've also got an Arduino Uno, which is gonna obviously send the servo PWM. And I've attached a little pot to the top. So I'm powering this off the USB. We've got the uh, servo wires come out here to go to the gripper with their ground pins. So we've got a common ground because otherwise they don't work. And then my analog pot's just actually attached to the top with a bit of sticky tape. And I'm just reading an analog in there with the analog zero. So we've got five volts and ground on that pot and the wiper of course goes to the analog in. So my code for this is pretty simple. I'm basically just attaching three servos and we've got three variables for the servos. We're gonna control them independently in the ends and I'm reading an analog pot and mapping the values there. So we've got three output values. So what I've got is a pot which is zero to 1023 and I'm scaling that 
to a microsecond value for the servo. Now, the servos normally work from 1,000 to 2,000 microseconds, with 1,500 in the middle. In this case, they seem to seek right down to 550 and up to 2,400 to get their 180 degrees of rotation. So uh, that's quite interesting on these servos. So I'm now um, writing those out to the serial terminal and finally writing them out to the servos using servo write microseconds for each of the servos. So if I open up a serial terminal, we can see the values there. And if I go and turn that analog pot, we should be to see the values changing and also the pulleys moving on those servos to get their 180 degrees of rotation. But wait a minute, so far all we've done is moved servos, tied a string to the fingers and that closes the gripper and that's pretty basic. But at the beginning I said I wanted to make a force control gripper and that means it's going to need to know how much force is being applied to its fingers. So much like the jumping robot leg I did with the elastic actuator, so we had a bungee in between the motor and the joint and we measured the joint position and we could see what the difference was and that meant we could work out how much force was being applied. So we're going to do something very similar to this. And that's why I've got this tall tower so that we can put some elastic in series with the motor and the actual joints. So I've gone to the trouble of buying actual springs this time instead of using bungee cord. And we need some springs that aren't too stiff like these ones which are far too stiff, I can't even stretch those with my hands. And we need them not too soft as well. So these I can stretch really easily so they'll stretch straight away. So what we really want is a spring like this one that will pull the finger but as soon as the finger stops on something the spring will start to stretch then we can measure the difference and then we'll know how much force is being applied so i've just put the spring and the string on one finger now so we can test it so if i go and turn this we can see the joint moves but then it gets stuck unfortunately you can see the spring stretching where the servo is pulling it but it's not pulling that joint so there's not quite enough force there but the spring is stretching because we're applying more force it's just there's never enough uh, to actually pull the joint so a bit of a design flaw there. So all I've done is put a little washer in there as a wedge on that joint so it doesn't fold back completely. And now it works perfectly well. And we get quite a good motion of that finger. Need to do something better than a washer jangling around in there. But that seems to work quite well. And you can see the spring is stretching at this point as it applies more force to that second digit, which is perfectly fine. But it is actually working. So I'm going to string up all the fingers, make some proper wedges, and we should be away. So I've now installed some little wedges you can see there, which means that's the uh, sort of maximum out position for that digit. And I've also added some more springs I've actually piggybacked up with uh, the other smaller springs I had. Unfortunately, I don't have any that are just the right stiffness. So now you can see those all stretching. And of course, the uh, gripper is on the table there, so it just stretches the springs. Oh, there we go, we've got quite a bit of force. So now everything appears to work and those fingers meet quite nicely in the middle. We're picking things up, kind of mess around with the string tensions but that seems to work and they fold quite satisfactorily and you should be able to see the strings inside there obviously when they come close still stretching as we apply more force and so on and if I shove my hand in here and grip it then we can uh, feel the tension there but if I keep pulling you can hopefully see those strings are still stretching because the uh, fingers can't go anymore and as we stretch them more, of course, we're applying more force. So that's pretty good. So now we're all set. So now we need to work out how much force is actually being applied and get that back into a variable on the Arduino so that we can actually specify how much force we need to pick up certain items. So several ways of doing that. I could measure the current on each servo and then we wouldn't even need the springs. That's one way you could do it. You could have a resistor and then you could run the power for that servo through the resistor and measure the voltage drop on the other end and that will tell you how much current drain there is. What I'm actually going to do is try and test how much the spring is stretching and that will of course tell us how much force there is. So what I'm going to do is measure the difference between the motor position and the joint position. Now I've got two joints in each finger so I could put potentiometers on both of them and add them together but actually what I'm going to do is something else. I'm going to use a flex sensor which will have a look at, closer look at in a minute that's in this little bag. This is an Adafruit flex sensor and that will actually fit across both joints. It's a long thing that changes resistance when it bends. So uh, why would I do it that way? Well I was thinking about soft robotics which could inflate with pneumatic sections and could be printed perhaps in NinjaFlex or something and some people have already achieved this and of course then you don't have any specific hard joints to uh, actually measure so you need something that flexes down the whole length of it a bit like if it's a tentacle. So I'm going to try and do that and see what happens. So let's have a closer look. So this is the long flex bend sensor from Adafruit which is about 100 millimeters long and basically it bends 
and it changes resistance. So it's a bit like a force sensitive resistor, but instead of for force, it's for bend. So this will fit across both joints on the finger, and then we can hopefully measure the total bend on that finger. So I'm now measuring those flex or bend sensors with three analog ins. So the first column is still the pot, the next three columns are the bend sensors. So if I just flex one finger there, you should be able to see one of the columns changing. There we go, and the last three columns are of course the servos still. So as I bend the fingers, of course, the servo value moves and so does the bend sensors. So now I just need to scale those so they're the same, or at least the same order, and we'll see if they run um, anything like linear with each other. So now I've got those bend sensors as analog ins, and I've basically just mapped those and scaled them because they do have different starts and ends basically. So I've tried to make them so they all run the same numbers. It's been a bit tricky. And basically what I'm doing is working out the force on each joint by working out the difference between the servo position and the bend sensor. Then I'm mapping it so it's roughly the same sort of value as the pot so that I can sort of drive an amount of force and we can see what the results are. So uh, if we actually look at those, which are the last three columns on here now, we can see the force that's being applied. So as I actually close that gripper, we'll see that more force is required. So there's a bit of a design flaw here. Obviously they're opposed by a bungee which um, requires more force to stretch as you stretch a joint, so it does require more force to close the hand. Um, as we get past that knuckle as well, it requires even more force, and eventually they close, and then they can't move any further. You can see the spring stretching, so of course that requires more force. So um, that's not too bad, it's not totally ideal, but we can nonetheless work out the difference between the actual what's going on with the finger and the motor position with the spring in the middle, and of course the more we stretch the spring, the more the number goes up. So if I put something big in and stop the joints, again, the number goes right up here. And if I grab one of those fingers and pull it out, then that force number, the middle column, will increase there because it thinks we're applying more force and you can see the spring stretching. So that's just about okay. So now I've turned this on its head and in fact, what I want to do is drive force rather than position. So what I've done instead of driving the servo positions from the pot is said if the pot is more than the amount of force being applied, then to close that finger. So basically add 20 to the servo position on each cycle of the loop. And if it's less, then take 20 away. And it does that for each finger independently. So now the results seem initially very similar. If we turn this pot, of course, it applies more force and it closes the fingers. And that seems pretty much the same as what we had before, but now we're actually driving the difference in force. And that's gonna do several things. So it does mean we can specify an amount of force, and basically the joint will try and comply with that. So if I pull this finger back, whether you can see it, but you can hear the motor actually there, actually moving the joint and trying to maintain a specific amount of tension on that spring. So that's quite useful because it means we can grip something with a specific amount of force, and the joint won't go any further. Obviously if it can't find anything, then it will close until it applies that much force. Now it's unfortunate that the fingers require more force as they get closed. If that wasn't the case, then they would just slowly close till they met something. So it's a bit of a design flaw. But ultimately it does make a compliant robot where we can manipulate each finger and the motors will actually decide to back off because they think they're applying too much force. So there's a few design things we could change there. Ideally we wouldn't have a joint that requires more force as it closes. So the bungee is not a very good idea, really we want a motor that pushes and pulls with a spring. So as it closes, it's just that same amount of force that would keep closing that joint. It wouldn't get a requirement to have more force as the joints close. Also, these bend sensors, of course, aren't very linear in themselves. So ideally with one joint pulled by one motor, we could just put a pot on it. We could also use a linear pot, of course, to measure the other end of the spring, and that would give us a better linear answer. But I just wanted to test the bend sensors out really for soft robots, as I said. So I think I might come back and do a part two um, where we can have a joint where we can just apply some force, the joint would keep closing, and if there was something in the middle, then it would know to stop or to squash it a lot more. Obviously, this is quite chunky as well. It came out quite a lot bigger than I wanted. I can grip an egg with it, but smaller items are going to be an issue. Although I do quite like the way that it's compliant, and we can just move those joints around, and you should have been able to see those servo values changing as well. So I think the basic concept is there, we just need a slightly different revision. So now let's imagine we have a whole robot arm with compliant joints which are force controlled, and that means we could just grab the end effector and move it, 
and then it would comply with us. We could save that position because we know what the actual joint position is, and then we can move it to another position and we could save that position. Then we could turn the force demand up and then we could have it replay those positions. With other end effectors, we could also use it to collide with something, and work out how much force it needs to push it so we could estimate its mass and lots of other useful things. So the end goal is to make a robot arm like that with a force control gripper and force control joints so we can either apply force or measure force and make it comply for training. So that's all for this time. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you liked it and check out all of my other robotics projects in the channel. All right, that's all for now.